everybody out tonight, and I'm going to ask those of you that will to join us in the choir. We do need some help, so come up and bring the songs of faith book. Help us in the choir. Thank you. 
They need a mic.
done a good job. I tell you what, we could go home now and say it's good to be in the house of the Lord. That was a true blessing. And uh, I was thinking as, as I saw the kids walking in tonight, it just what a blessing. It just brings joy to your heart. Just see them walk in, and then whenever they're singing, it's just, just praise the Lord's all I know to say. Just thank God. And I, I want to say again, I, I appreciate all you young people, the effort that y'all are putting out to, to bring these kids in, and, and it's just such a blessing. So thank God for you, and uh, just praise the Lord for everything. Thank you for being here tonight, and uh, if you'd like to read with me, turn over into uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 5. And I'll read you some scripture there, and and then if the Lord leads, I got some more to go to. If if uh, we'll just see what he he wants us to do here tonight. So uh, the Bible's talking about walking in the light. Now there's a if we're not in the will of God, we're walking in darkness. The lost are walking in darkness. I know before I was saved, I walked in darkness, could not understand the way or the will of God, did not know how to please God, but there is a way that we can please God, and there is a way that we know if we are where we need to be with God, and that is walking in the light. Now, uh, and, this, and the Word of God tells us exactly uh, how to do that. Now... You know, I've said this many times, God didn't save us and just throw us out here in this big world and say, okay, find your way to heaven and uh, find, uh, do the best you can do uh, to live for God. God gave us his word. God gave us the Holy Spirit today that we got saved. And whenever we are living our life, whenever we start walking out of the, the path that God has laid before us, then our spirit is stirred. And, and we feel that in our soul, that God is trying to speak to us and God's trying to, to get us back where we need to be. So uh, there, there is a way that we can live our life that will please God and we can see God's blessings in our life and we can have the peace that God has promised us, the peace and joy as being a Christian. And uh, so let me read to you tonight here in Ephesians chapter 5, and, and this is a walk that God wants his children to walk. Uh, he didn't just turn us out and say, here's the world, you just go any way you want to go, and it'll be all right. That's not what he said. He said, there is a walk, there is a path, there is a way that I want you as my children to live. And I want to tell you this, as you try to live for God, you're not going to please everybody. And, and I, I about decided in my life, I decided a long time ago, that I want to please God. And, and if we please God, then everything else will take care of itself. So chapter 5 of Ephesians it goes and tells us here, and, and he says that this is a walk for his dear children. Now, um, I thought a lot, and I prayed a lot, and uh, when it ti comes time, and I, and I asked the Lord, even this week and, and many times before, that he would allow me to live a life that would please him, and... I would love to be able to live a life that would please God enough that he could say when it come time for me to go into heaven, come in, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I would love to hear when I leave this life and go to be with the Lord. And, and the Lord knows my heart. I want to try to do what is right in his eyes. So as we read here, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now, we are his dear children if we've been saved. And, and I truly believe that if we 
get on our knees daily and, and we give our heart to God and seek to do God's will and all that we see in the scripture that we understand trying to do God's will, we'll be able to walk in this path as one of God's dear children. And, and what, wouldn't it be just so wonderful as God looks down up, upon us, and, and he does? We're serving a wonderful God, a God that's able to do all things. And, and God's seen me this morning open my eyes from my sleep. God's seen me all day long in everything that I did today. And God saw you all day long today. So wouldn't it be wonderful as God looks down here upon this earth to say, you know, just look over at Jesus and say, you know, this is my child. And, and this is my child that's walking in, in my will. Uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if God could do that? Well, if we take the scriptures and we look into the scriptures and we ask God, to open up the scripture to where we can understand it and then give us the strength to walk in this path that God has laid before us. I believe that, that we're seeking God, we're trying to do God's will. I believe that God would look down and say, this is one of my children that's, that's trying to walk faithfully before me. And that's what God wants out of us. So as we look into it, let's see what happens. Uh, Let's see what he's telling us and how that we can walk in this path and, and walk, he said, and walk in love. Uh, in my heart, I know of nobody that, that I, I, I hate in, in no way. Now, there's people's ways that we don't like, but I love people. I love people's soul, and I want to see everybody uh, that I come in contact with go to heaven. Now, we know that everybody's not going to go to heaven, and it's, a, it's an awful thing to know that, but it's a fact. But it's our choice. Do we choose to, to love? Do we choose to care? And walk in love as Christ also has loved us. Now, wasn't it a wonderful love when Jesus went to the cross and gave his life for us? And do you remember what he said there when he prayed? He, he said, Father, forgive them. As he looked out to all of those that, that had took him and nailed him on the cross and, and all uh, those that had walked by and spit on him, all those that had slapped him, all those that had mocked him and, and made fun of him, he looked out over the whole crowd and the whole world and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So, you know, as we go through life and things happen and, and maybe uh, uh, we, we just need to ask God to forgive us and to forgive others. So as we, And that's love. That is love that, that Jesus Christ himself is showing to me and you. And that is part of this walk that God has laid before us. Now you say, well, uh, I don't like this and I don't like that. There's a lot of things that, that we won't like in life, but we can love the souls of every person out there on the face of this earth. I know before I was saved, there was only very few people that I even liked, uh, let alone loved. Uh, I loved my mama, uh, and, and I, I loved my daddy when he wasn't whooping me. But uh, um, after I got saved, that changed. Because God come inside and, and fill me with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is love. And you see, if we can't love people, then we need to look because we could be walking in darkness. So as we go on, and walk in love as Christ also him, uh, has loved us and has given himself for us uh, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as becometh saints now he's saying keep all that stuff out of your life uh, because 
if you get into that, then you're walking in darkness. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. Now, all these things, God's saying, if you get, get this in your life, then you're walking in darkness. That's what God is saying. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Madison said this, and Madison said that, and I'm mad at Madison. Uh, well, I'm reading to you out of the Word of God. So it's between you and God, uh, so is, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this we know. Now, you know, think about this, and I like to do this to uh, check up on my own life. Uh, have I give God thanks for anything this week? Have I give God thanks for anything today? You know, he said we need to give thanks. And, and I want to tell you something. One way for, for God's children to go to walking in darkness is, is to just start seeing the bad things in this, this life and, and the bad things around you. We need to stop and, and start seeing some of the good things. You know, a lot of families are separated because uh, either the husband or the wife or both uh, just start seeing the bad things in the other one. Bad things, bad things. You know, what we need to do is to stop and start seeing some of the good things. See the good things in others around us. There's good in everybody. And, and that there's good in this life. And this is a wonderful life that God has given to us. So we need to start looking. You know, a lot of people, as the old saying is, they look at the glass half empty, always something bad, always something terrible. They pull themselves down and they pull others down. Uh, so what we need to do is start seeing the, the good things, the blessings in life that God has given to us. And I'll guarantee you every single one of us sitting here tonight, we can stop just for a few minutes and it probably wouldn't hurt any of us to, to sit down on the porch just for a little while and think about the goodness that God has brought into our life. And then we can start looking and seeing that light that God has lit in the path that God wants his children to be walking into. Amen. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, which is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Now, if, if I'm saved and I get out of the will of God, God will chastise me. God will chastise his children. Before I was saved, I would do things that was, was not right, and, and I was never chastised. Uh, now, if I got caught, my daddy would whip me, uh, but after I got saved, if I get out of the will of God, then God chastises me, and that is for all of his children. But now, there is joy. There is joy when we walk in the light, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Uh, so when we walk in this light that the Bible talks about, we'll find joy. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. He's saying this, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Now when sin is, is out there, we need to stay away from it, and we don't need to be partakers uh, in sin. For ye, for ye were sometimes darkness, see here, sometimes you were walking in darkness, but now you are light. In other words, you've been saved, brought out of that darkness into Jesus Christ, which is the light, and he will light the paths that he wants his children to be walking in. And whenever we're walking in the path that God has laid out before us and for us to walk in, we're going to find peace 
and we're going to find joy in serving God. And we, now listen to this, listen to this, they will be fruit in our lives. There will be fruit in a Christian's life that is walking in the path that God has laid out before them. So uh, you can mark that down. That's the word of God. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. Walk as God's children. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. Now the fruits of the Spirit is, we all know what the fruits of the Spirit is. Love, joy, and peace. Long-suffering. Uh, the, the fruits of the Spirit. So, and then he says, for the fruits of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Righteousness. What does that mean? That means doing what is right in the eyes of God. Not in the eyes of man, but doing what is right in the eyes of God. So, as we go on down through here, uh, I want to read a few more verses to you. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Now, there is a life that is not acceptable to the Lord, and there is a life that is acceptable to the Lord. Now, when we read that, we say, well, Lord, what is this acceptable life that I can live that you will accept how I live my life? Well, he's telling us all the way down through here. He's telling us how to live and where to walk. And as we, we live this life and, and we, we know the Word of God and the Bible teaches us to, to take it and, and wrap it around our hearts and our soul and in our minds, plus we also got the Holy Spirit. And as we, we live this life, we're guided through the Word of God and through the Holy Spirit. And whenever the Holy Spirit is telling us, and I, and I give this illustration Many times when I talk about the Holy Spirit, and it's the best one I've, I, I know of, and I believe the Lord showed it to me. And it's like, uh, how do we follow the Holy Spirit? I prayed about that for a long time. I'm talking about uh, many, many days uh, praying about uh, the Holy Spirit and how to follow the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden, it was just like a light coming on. It, it was like I could see two magnets and you turn them together like they should go, and they'll just pop right together. You turn one one way and the other the other way, and they'll push apart. And that's the same way that the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, that, that same Holy Spirit, whenever you're doing what God wants you to do, then your spirit and God's spirit is together. Whenever you're living and walking through this Christian life, and, and you're about to step out into sin, your soul, that spirit, is, is pushing against. It's saying, no, stop, no, stop, stop, stop. This is not right. You can override that. You can override that, but you'll pay a price for it. I can assure you that. So as we go on, there is a walk that God is pleased with it says, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. He says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. In other words, we need to stay away from the unfruitful works of darkness. We need to keep it out of our lives. Um, but rather, reprove them. In other words, uh, if your children are doing wrong, tell them. And that's what God's doing here. Uh, for... It is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Now you see, a child of God, back to the Holy Spirit, walking. God says, okay, Madison, this is my boundaries. This is the path that I want you to live your life in. This is the boundaries. If I start getting out of these boundaries... The Holy Spirit starts speaking to me and telling me, now what's it speaking? Do I hear it? No, no. It's, it's that spirit that is inside me that's, that's pushing against, saying, no, Madison, no, no. 
Uh, but whenever I have that free spirit, then I'm walking in that light that is Jesus Christ. So God, God don't leave us, and, and we're without excuse, people. That's why that, that uh, one reason the Holy Spirit is in us. We're without excuse uh, as we live our lives down here upon this earth. And, and God can fill your heart with, with joy and peace and love. Uh, I've thought about Forrest Bryson. thought about him all week. thought about him last week. I might have mentioned it to Adam or Zach or some of them. And, and I know I mentioned it to Diane. And, and Forrest, Forrest loved the Lord. Uh, he would sit back there, and, and I thought this week, Forrest, if I preached on heaven, Forrest say, that was some of the best preaching I believe I've ever heard in my life. That was the best sermon I've ever heard in my life. If I preached on hell, Forrest would say, that's the best one I've ever heard in my life. Forrest was a, a, a person that God put in this life for us here at Battle Branch. Uh, to help us and encourage us along the way. Now, people, we need to uh, realize that. Forrest was a blessing to me. He was a blessing. Now, yes, Forrest talked a lot, uh, but that was Forrest. Uh, but, but I want to tell you something. Forrest was a blessing in my life. Uh, uh, so some of us is going to have to step up and fill Forrest's shoes. Amen? Uh, Forrest encouraged people. Uh, he tried to he tried to encourage people along the way, and that's what we need to do. But all things that are reproved are made manifested by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake! Now God, I believe, is screaming out from heaven to this whole world, saying, Now wake up, and look and see where you're at. A lot of people, you know, it's just like driving down the road in a car. Uh, you can't go to sleep and stay in the road. And if we're a Christian, we can't go to sleep on God and stay in the path that God has laid before us. So here he says, uh, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now if we'll look in the word, wake up, seek God's will and his face, God will show us the path that he wants us to be walking in. Anybody say amen to that? <laughs> that was weak. <laughs> I'm going to let some of y'all come up here one of these nights and, and, and <laughs> try it and see how it is. <laughs> but anyway, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil redeeming the time you know people if you've got 50 years left here it's going to be short if you have 50 years here left it's going to be short so we better wake up we better realize what God is saying because one day, Madison McCracken will stand before Almighty God. And he will give an account for how he's lived his life. Whether he has seek God's will and walked in the path that God has laid before him. Now we have an opportunity. There's still breath in every one of our bodies. We still have an opportunity in this life to really get on our knees and seek the path of God and the will of God. There's so many that need Jesus. There's so many that, that needs encouraged. There's so many uh, uh, people that, that need, need God. But I noticed this several years ago. Seemed like everything in this earth got just, just wide open. I, I work out uh, work for the public and years ago people would call and you'd tell them say, oh, uh, it'll be a month it could be a month and a half before I can get, get to you we're living in a day now people don't want to wait a day 
We're living in an instant world. They want what they want, and they want it right now. Now, what we need to do is to realize that 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 time is short here upon this earth. No matter, I hope, I hope if God tires his coming that you live to be a ripe old age and, and got good health. I, I, I pray that for all of us. But whatever it is, if you live to be a uh, uh, hundred years old, it's still going to be a vapor. And people, we better look and realize that it's short and we need to be about the Father's business. Now, I want us to think and do a little exam in our life tonight. Think about this. Is there any doubt whatsoever in your life that you're not walking in the path that God has laid out in this word? Are you walking in the path that God has laid out? Or do you, you think, well, I believe I'll go this way. We need to, no matter what, go the way this right here says. When I went up to Canada on a moose hunt, they had a bunch of horses. They had walked in, rode in to where we camped, and we got on them horses and stayed for about uh, several days, two weeks, on them horses. And the way them boys would do them horses, we packed all our stuff on them horses and then rode the ones in front. And they'd take them horses, and they would catch their, their tail. And they would go, I believe, I, I could be raw, wrong on the amount of hands, but it'd be like one, two, and then three hands, I believe. And they'd tie a rope around that horse's tail. And they'd tie it to the halter on the next horse. And they'd do that right on down. There's 18 horses. And they had them all tied. And them horses would just go, this way and that way. And every morning we'd hobble them horses at night. We went to, uh, to bed. And the next morning we'd get up and catch us a horse. And, and most of the time you never rode the same horse. A lot of times you'd ride a horse that had been tied into this train. And them horses, if they was a horse in front out yonder, and he went around this way, and you thought you was riding one of these that had been on that train, and you thought, well, I'm just going to go straight through here. That horse, you'd just about have to fight him to make him lead, lead that path that them other horses went. You just about have to, uh, you just couldn't hardly make him do it. We ought to be that way with the Lord. We ought to. This is the path that God's laid out, and we ought to be that way. We ought to stay faithful on it, and we ought to trust in him. So tonight, I'm going to ask you to stand, and I want us all to think, am I walking right where he wants me to? If we are, we're going to see blessings, and we're going to see fruit in our life. So tonight, if there's anyone that has a need of any kind tonight, you come, and we'll pray with you tonight. I appreciate that. I appreciate you being here, and I pray that this is strength to you any others? You come on. We're going to pray just in a minute. All right, I want to ask everybody to come pray with us, and let's pray for Bible school. Bible school's coming up in a, a week and a half, I think. So uh, we want to see a lot of children saved. So uh, pray for our church and all the needs that we have here at our church. So everybody pray with us. Our Father, I thank you, God, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, that you have put in our hearts and in our lives. And God, I pray that you would lead me in the right path, Lord. I want to walk in a way that is pleasing to you. So I praise you and I thank you, God, for everything that you've done for me. I thank you, Lord, for the love that you've given me and the guidance, Lord, I thank you for this church, Father, and every one that you have put in it. I thank you, God, for everyone that's here tonight. And, Lord, I pray a special blessing upon every one of them, God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I pray, God, for our Bible school coming up. I pray for the Holy Spirit to fill our classrooms and, and our, 
our church, Lord. I pray, God, that he'd just be here. And, Lord, any child that has reached age accountability, I pray for their salvation. God, I ask you to save them. So, again, I thank you for everyone that's here, and I ask you to go with us and be with us through the remainder of this week and be with us in everything that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Appreciate you being here tonight. Free to go.